Hazard Pay heats up as another major scandal hits and a lawsuit is filed. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Afternoons at LA. Hope you're good and safe. This is our two-hour program block that starts every day at 3.30 with a check, then goes to Hazard Pay, then FPUC, and finally Rent Eviction Moratorium, which we bring back into the mix today. Big shocking news today about Hazard Pay. In two regards, both an incredibly shocking lawsuit filed that concerns uh, essential workers. Oh boy, you gotta see this one. And then another new development as the ramp up and heated arguments over one essential workplace becomes a big battleground between the White House and an entire industry. Oh Lord, that's just, you know, uh, get your fan and get ready to fan this one down because this is really hot. Put some extra ice in the coffee because I'm about to deliver some really shocking news. First, Instacart sued for the way in which he was handling essential workers. Oh my goodness. Um, District of Columbia Attorney General Carl Ricine filed lawsuit lit litigation today, Thursday, against Instacart, claiming the grocery chain collected millions of dollars and allegedly deceived customers into thinking that there was an optional service fee used as a tip, tip for the workers, the essential workers, when allegedly the tip went to the company. Oh my God, report CNBC. Boy, um, this is not the first lawsuit about essential workers not getting their money and it's going to the bosses. The suit, this is CNBC, the suit echoes an earlier charge against food delivery services DoorDash. Racine sued DoorDash in November, alleging it pocketed tips meant for workers and deceived customers about where the money would be directed. Now, what is this concern? Hazard pay, it has everything to do with hazard pay. Remember, hazard pay is at $10,000 to come to you if you worked as an essential worker during the pandemic. That's money that you're entitled to. You are a frontline worker. As DoorDash drivers qualify for hazard pay. Um, uh, Instacart, Instacart drivers qualify for hazard pay. How would it work? Basically, you, if it became law, which is not yet, you would apply, you would um, determine how many hours you worked during the pandemic starting from January up to the present. I've done the calculation on this channel almost every day for, you know, two months, $10,000, up to $10,000 if you worked um, during the pandemic January to the present and your 2019 earnings was less than $100,000, $10,000. If your 2019 earnings was over $100,000 and you get $5,000. Now, why is this breaking news minutes ago so important for hazard pay? It's so important because as you recall, because I've educated you, I've given you the purple power, hazard pay has to be applied for by your employer. You can't apply for hazard pay. Patty Pelosi and her heroes bill made that huge foul up by putting the employer to apply and the verb is not or adverb is not one you like it's bad news adverb her grammar is not good she not only says whatever his name is to Mark Meadows she chooses really bad adverbs it says the employer may apply for you may may yes does not means they don't have to in fact to make it even clearer she puts another provision in there the employer does not have to apply for you well, what if the employer does not apply for you? Do you have any recourse? No. So you don't get the $10,000? Correct. Well, how do I ensure my employee doesn't apply for me? You listen to this story. Boy, um, the purple power is about to give you some more powerful news. As Carl Rising says that DoorDash and Instacart are suggesting to consumers that when you order the service, you're tipping the essential worker, the driver, the frontline worker, and you're not. The money is going to the employer, the boss, the company. Uh, according to a press release announcing the loose lawsuit, Instacart used to provide 
customers an option to tip at checkout with a default rate of 10% to adjust. But in 2016, according to the Attorney General's office, Instacart replaced this tip section with an optional service fee placed in the same spot with an adjustable 10% default rate. Instacart changed this practice in April 20, 2019 after media reports and contact from the Attorney General's office. Race's office alleges Instacart never disclosed that those fees were optional and would cover Instacart's caught delivery and operating expenses, aka it went to the company, not to the employee, says the allegation as reported by CNBC. Um, really shocking. Now, before I continue, I want to make very clear, Instacart was asked for a comment by CNBC. They declined to request for comments, so there's no comment for Instacart from these allegations. Um, the article also does not issue a, uh, a response from DoorDash to its lawsuit filed in November of last year. This is really shocking. How bad is these? How bad are these allegations? Well, the suit also alleges Instacart violated DC tax law by failing to collect hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales taxes on its delivery and service fees, and wants restitution for customers who allegedly were deceptive fees. More money coming back to you. Oh Lord! Here's the statement. Quote, Instacart tricked district consumers into believing they were tipping for grocery delivery workers. Imagine grocery delivery workers, the most obvious example of hazard pay employees. They're not only grocery workers, but they're also delivery workers. Both are essential workers under the hazard pay bill of um, the HEROES Act. When, in fact, the company was charging them extra fees and pocketing the money, says Racine in the statement. Instacart used these deceptive fees to cover its operating costs while simultaneously paying de-sale, failing to pay D.C. sales tax. We filed suit to force Instacart to honor its legal obligation, pay D.C. and taxes owned, and returns millions of dollars just to, cons- just to consumers the company deceived. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, there's always something new when it comes to hazard pay. Uh, boy, if you've not liked this video, got out because, I mean, this I'm not done with the news. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm itching. <laughs> this is just like, you know, um, more bad, shocking, scandalous news now about hazard pay. This comes from a major part of American business, an entire genre is at arms with the president and he's at arms with them who is it the airline industry if you don't recall my reporting this goes back almost three weeks ago when steve mnuchin appeared on news and said he is very angry at the airline industry because on the first stimulus package he dedicated and allocated billions of dollars to the airline industry so that that money would be used to ensure that workers were not laid off, not furloughed, and not forced into early retirement. Thereafter, they got the money, and they did exactly that, says the allegations. They furloughed, they laid off, and they forced early retirement for his workers. Mnuchin, Treasury Secretary Donald Trump, was irate. He remained to be irate and said this can't be done again. This came as the airline industry's lobbyists came to Washington to lobby for more stimulus under second stimulus package. Now, with Moving Meadows, Steve Mark Meadows, it became very moving for the airline industry, first saying that the president wants to give more money to the airlines, then saying the president's furious at the airlines, um, then Mnuchin saying, you know, we pay the money for the first time. Well, the latest rip, came from the president yesterday with Moving Meadows, saying that the president is threatening an executive order against the airlines, demanding that they, one, not lay you off, two, they may not cut service, three, they may not furlough you, because they got money, our money, federal tax money, to not do that. The president has a complete executive authority under the Constitution to do that. He can do that. Well, here we go. The airlines are fighting back. United Airlines uh, to cut 2,850 pilot jobs if they don't get more government aid under a second stimulus package. This is not even before we even get to the issue of the executive order. I mean, are they going to cut more? United Airlines said on Thursday it has to cut 2,850 pilot jobs between October 1st, just around the corner, and November 30th if the government does not offer more stimulus between airlines and payroll for six more months. They won six months of stimulus. 
um, these job cuts were released in a memo, says CNBC, and they're significantly higher than anything seen in the industry. We previously saw uh, similar statements, but there were smaller numbers from De Delta Airlines and American Airlines. How bad is the situation? Well, let me explain what's going on. Um, Phil Lebeau, who's a great reporter on CNBC, he covers airlines. He talked about the new United Airlines chief that came in just a few months ago. Since that, since he came in, the stock has been rallying. The stock is way up, but the um, occupancy level on the airlines has now dropped again. Apparently, there was a little surge when the pandemic uh, lockdowns were lifted, and now the occupancy levels have dropped again, and the airlines are in trouble. Um, what does the memo say? The memo attained by LLA Today says, it's important to note that our numbers are based upon the current travel demand for the remainder of the year and our anticipated, our anticipated flying schedule, which continues to be fluid with the resurgence of COVID-19 in regions across the United States. As Phil Lebeau said, hey, the numbers are dropping on occupancy. So if occupancy levels drop further, does that mean more essential workers, those pilots will be laid off? It appears they will. How much money did United Airlines get to ensure that it would not lay off essential workers, that it would pay the hazard pay your workers, that it would pay keep them on salary? It got $25 billion as part of the airlines in the first stimulus package in March. It ran out and they've all lobbied for another $25 billion, but Republicans aren't giving it to them and the Democrats aren't giving it to them. It's a very serious situation that is really um, quite fluid. You don't know where it's gonna go. The president's position currently with moving meadows, which, you know, changes by the minute, sort of like the sound on the set of, the set of this today's recording. It's loud and it's quiet and it's loud and it's quiet. You don't know if the president is really gonna get pissed as he appeared yesterday and said, I'm just done, I'm done with this. Meadows said yesterday that the president said he's just tired of this and is not gonna keep on playing games, especially with the airlines and will issue executive orders. Meadows would not give further detail about what the executive orders are, but you gotta understand, <laughs> executive orders are the opposite of where the airlines are currently. They have currently $25 billion. And let me explain a little bit more about that. <laughs> Phil Lebeau on CNBC did a graph this morning that showed how much money the airlines have in cash. This is cash. It's sitting in the bank. It's just sitting around. They have fortunes, billions and billions and billions of dollars of cash. So they're very liquid. Guess why they're liquid? <laughs> They're not liquid because they had some really nice tea for lunch or that, you know, they had a nice you know, Cabernet or, you know, Pinot Grigio. They're liquid because you, you got your money went to them. They're liquid because the first stimulus round gave them $25 billion. So the most liquid among the airlines currently I can report is currently Southwest Airlines. The second most liquid is America is a United Airlines incredible liquidity enormous amount of cash on hand billions and billions of dollars but is it enough to sustain them well Wall Street thinks it is president thinks it is Mnuchin thinks it is and so here you have these people who got 25 billion dollars of which is sitting in the bank and they're saying hey you know um, knock, knock. we want some more money we, we would like some more money well, the president says, no, and I'm not going to give you more money. The Republicans say, no, I'm not going to give you more money. And now the Republicans' leadership is now suggesting, uh, maybe you got to give me that money in the bank back to me. Yeah, it's going the other direction. So it's unclear where this is going to go. And if you're asking what Patty Pelosi is thinking about this, no. She's chasing the postman, and she's not chasing the postman on an airline. She's you know, she's worried about the FDA and the F FAA and the CIA and the CRA. and then you know. But she's not worried about UA. She's not worried about United Airlines. She has not talked about this. She has a lot of other stuff to be, you know, petty about. Um, so... How bad will this occur? Well, unless their demands of $25 billion more is provided to these five or six airlines, United, Southwest, Delta, um, American, they're gonna start cutting. Cutting, cutting, cutting those essential workers October 1st. And yes, I'm talking about airline pilots. 
that don't think the people on the tarmac, don't think that the people on the plane, don't think that the people that prepare the plane won't get cut as well. I mean, I'm here to report really great news about Hazard Bay, but yet I gotta forewarn you, if you are a worker in these industries, what could be happening to you is next. Remember, Hazard Pay is $10,000 that could land your bank account if the HEROES Act is approved. Great news continues to be abound about negotiations. Yeah, I know Nancy Pelosi gave that chat this morning and she was all petty as always, but most of the insiders think that a second stimulus check deal will be done and a second stimulus package deal will be done this September. So I don't want you to be too alarmed what I do want you to do is hit the alarm on the Brothers channel. Uh, do three things for me. First, if you like this video, which I hope you do, because I'm wearing purple for God's sake, <laughs> hit that like button, that like button. You know, if it's that airline that gave you really bad peanuts that last flight, you know, hit it really hard, that like button. Uh, and then like and, and then subscribe to this channel. Hit that subscribe and alert sh uh, button. You know, we're trying to get to 225. We're really on path great path. I the call to action to do 225. I said last Saturday, we're at like 217, 218 now. So we're almost there. I mean, geez, I said two weeks, we're almost there. So let's keep it up. Purple power, purple pledge. Keep it up. Keep tweeting, keep tagging, keep sharing these videos to Facebook. Coming up next is FPUC with big developments. As always, stay informed, stay motivated, stay smiling, and stay at that light for more.